All right. Um, this is just going to be for learning outcome A in the chapter seven topic support guide. And it's the effects of volcanoes on the chemical composition of the ocean or the chemical makeup of the ocean. And for this, so you'll need the topic support guide for chapter seven, and then you will also need the foldable notes that I gave you guys for the volcanoes. This is the moment that the volcano erupts underneath the sea. Although relatively little is known about them, it's believed there are over 1 million submarine volcanoes, largely located along the Atlantic Ridge. These volcanoes are responsible for producing 75% of the Earth's magma. Underwater volcanoes are understood to work like their counterparts on dry land. They form towering mountains submerged well below sea level. Some are reported to rise as much as 10,000 feet above the seabed. While it's relatively rare to see, these eruptions can also create new islands above the water. On November 14, 1963, a trawler sailing just south of Iceland noticed a plume of smoke billowing from the sea. Thinking it was a fire on board by the ship, the travel tours were was in fact an underwater volcano erupting and witnessed the birth of a new island. It was named for the Circe as the fire giants of the Norse mythology. Today, the island of Circe is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the only people allowed to set foot on it are the scientists studying the ecosystem and geology of this unspoiled island. It's thought that Iceland itself was created in this way by underwater volcanoes millions of years ago. So why are they making where to see what erupts? These submarine volcanoes have a big part to play in shaping the world above water. Oops. Okay. More than 70% of volcanic activity occurs on you can watch the second one if you'd like. Okay, so in the first part of the topic support guide, just looking at the learning outcomes there. Okay, um, and I want to fix this. Okay. All right, so our learning outcomes. Um, we need to demonstrate an understanding of the effect of volcanic activity runoff um, and atmospheric dissolving gases of uh, gases dissolving from the atmosphere on the chemical makeup of ocean water. And it's really just going to focus on what is it going to do to the pH and what is it going to do to the salinity. <clears throat> um, so reading down there, um, the seawater in the ocean is pretty stable, but there can be local changes. Um, the average is 35 parts per thousand. I've showed you what that looked like. Um, places where you could have lower salinity, you may have the rain diluting it because that's just fresh water, or you could have melting of sea ice, um, again, just fresh water, or you could have an input from a river or other like runoff. All right, right below it, um, the chemical makeup of the water also stays fairly constant. There is the most amount of um, sodium and chloride ions, which is why the ocean has the taste of it being salty, the sodium and the chloride ions. Um, 
but there's others. There's phosphates, there's magnesium, which organisms need for chlorophyll production, so they can do photosynthesis. Um, hydrogen carbonate ions, which can further dissociate into um, carbonate ions, I believe. You didn't need to know that detail. Um, but that would create carbonic acid in the ocean, which is really bad for your shells. Um, and then potassium is also present. So um, further down, it says, although um, it's going to stay fairly constant, gases can be emitted from volcanoes. Um, and there's you know, ash and other particles that are emitted from volcanoes. Those can get into the ocean, and those can affect the chemical makeup or the chemical composition of the water. The gases that are emitted from volcanoes are carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, which is a main component in sulfuric acid, um, hydrogen sulfide, which is H2S, and that is the energy source for hydrothermal vents, for uh, at hydrothermal vents for doing chemosynthesis, and then hydrogen chloride, which is actually HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. So everything coming out of the volcano is extremely acidic. So you can just plan right now that it's going to decrease the pH of the ocean. Okay, and so all I did here was just accentuated the. carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and hydrochloric acid. Okay, that third little paragraph. Um, furthering from the volcanic gases, the gases will dissolve. So we need to know that verb of, um, especially if it says explain how. So like, how do the gases do that though? How do they get in? You want to say that they are going to dissolve. So they can dissolve a couple ways. If the volcano is emitting, um, is erupting on land, then the gases can dissolve in what's referred to as atmospheric water. It's just water vapor. Atmospheric water is water vapor. So the gases can get dissolved into the water that's in the atmosphere, condense, and then you can precipitate down, have precipitation. And that, again, would be acid rain. Um, it could also, though, rain on land, and then runoff could bring that in directly. Um, but finishing up what I wrote in blue, then, submerged volcanoes at tectonic boundaries, divergent boundaries, and convergent boundaries, where you have subduction. The plate that gets subducted is the oceanic plate because it's more dense. Okay, so plate boundaries, um, they can emit gases, and um, if and it says submerged volcano. So this is a volcano that's already underwater. Um, the same things are coming out. It doesn't matter um, if it's that it's erupting on land or it's erupting underwater. Just that the method of how they get into the water then will, will change. But what's actually coming out, it doesn't change. It's not going to change. It's the, all those um, gases and minerals, those are all coming from the same place. They're all coming from magma in the mantle. So regardless of how it comes on Earth, like it's not going to change what's coming out. I think in class I made a gross um, analogy, you know, like if you have to like throw up or something, whether you throw up in the toilet or you throw up in the garbage can, it's still the same thing coming out. Okie doke. Um, chloride, that's the only thing I put there. Chloride is um, thought to have been uh, originated in the ocean from volcanoes, and volcanoes are going to be the biggest source of chloride ions. All right, building a little bit further with runoff. Um, so runoff, you already know from Chapter 4, it is the flow of water that's on land and going to the sea. So whether, you know, we talked about something having to be weathered, broken down to small pieces or erosion, moved, no matter what, to get something from land into the ocean, it's, I mean, it could either be wind erosion or just runoff. And it's typically most of the time going to be runoff. So runoff is just going to be water from land going into the ocean. Um, and this could be from melting snow, melting ice. It doesn't just have to be precipitation. Um, but we do know from Chapter 4 again, I, I know in Chapter 4 they refer to it as soil water, but it's water that's in the soil. Um, water, when, it's precipit when it precipitates, water will be on land, and then those water molecules can leach out nutrients 
or leach out pollutants or leach out fertilizers, which would be your nutrients, um, could leach out toxins, could leach out oil. They're able to like dissolve or leach or steal it out of that soil. And now it can, now it's incorporated into runoff. It can actually take its way to the ocean. So reading right here where it says water passes through soil, that's infiltration, it's filtering in or urban runoff, but that water could, and it's, urban runoff is just like, um, like urbanized areas where humans are. Um, the runoff could have pollutants in it because it could leach, again, leach those out of the soil or leach those off the ground and then carry it into the ocean. Um, and then we talked about bioaccumulation because some of those pollutants cannot be broken down. Some of them get stuck in um, muscle tissue or in fat tissue and we don't have enzymes to break it down. So it'll build up higher in your trophic levels as those organisms get passed up each trophic level um, because it's never broken down, it's never digested or um, decomposed, then that will become a bioaccumulation situation. And the last one. So the gases, um, and that's what I put in green, gases maintain pretty much an atmospheric equilibrium. So the amount of gas inside the ocean is about the same as what's outside the ocean. Okay, but that will depend on a couple things. That will depend on temperature of the water and uh, the salinity of the water. And so we've also talked about this and when I all, when I give you the example of how do we like to drink our soda we like to have our carbonated drinks cold because um, gases can't stay in solution if the water is really warm and so I wrote that here where it says high temp low gas same with salinity if you have a ton of salt packed in an area there's just not enough space to fit oxygen or to fit any gas carbon dioxide any of it so the actual concentration of gases will depend on how soluble um, they are within the water at the moment. Colder water is able to hold gases really well. Fresh water is able to hold gases better than salt water. Oh, excuse me. Okay, um, gases that get dissolved, um, it's gonna be like nitrogen because that's 70% of your atmosphere. Um, oxygen, carbon dioxide, there's a lot of mixing at the surface that gets them in there. Um, nitrogen though, nitrogen gas is unusable, so you need organisms like diazotrophs. Diazo meant nitrogen, troph is feeder. You need an organism like a diazotroph that's able to do nitrogen fixation or take nitrogen and fix it into a usable form. And that usable form, those could be ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, and now a producer can take in, take up the ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, and synthesize something organic. But in the nitrogen situation, it always went diazotroph first, something that was able to convert nitrogen gas into a usable form of nitrogen. Nitrogen gas is just non-reactive. Okay, have your foldable ready. I gave this to you in class. If you're an in-class student, if you're an e-learner, then this is on your Google Classroom. Um, it is two-sided, so if your printer is not able to print the inside, that's okay. The inside actually does not have much um, writing on it at all. You would be able to just rewrite that yourself. The outside would be worth printing, though. Row some color on there. Not too much, because you're going to be annotating it. And you can go ahead and pause this, um, and then once you have some color on there, we'll move it on. This is going to be your volcano on land, what's on the left, and then the volcano underwater, the submerged volcano, is on the right. Okay. All right, with color added on now, um, I just added in the gases that we went over in the topic support guide, the gases that come out of the volcanoes. And because the magma and the, where the gases are coming from is all originating in the same place, from the mantle, um, it does it's going to be the same thing coming out just in different location so in both of these big um, plumes of smoke you're gonna have hydrochloric acid sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide 
which is the, um, again, the um, H2S, the energy molecule for chemosynthesis. Um, and then a little bit of HG, which is mercury. It's the mercury gas. So add those in. The next thing that happens, so if you notice I put in red how it gets, like the next step, so it's going to erupt. And then if I'm looking at the one on land, these gases will get dissolved into water vapor. So gas going into the water vapor. And so I added these into the clouds now because that's where your water vapor is. In the ocean, the one that's submerged, um, again, these gases will dissolve because you're going from a gas to a liquid, so that would be dissolving. And now the ocean water has dissolved carbon dioxide, dissolved mercury, hydrochloric acid, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. You can pause this to add those in. All right. So just the one that's on land, because this isn't going to happen underneath the ocean. Um, once those are those gases are dissolved into the clouds or the water vapor, well, then we can have precipitation. And so this is actually going to be acid rain because of the sulfur dioxide. <clears throat> so this could precipitate um, or rain right into the ocean or... It could also go on to land. Okay, and right now I'm just going to look at the one that's on land. Let's not look at the underwater one. <laughs> okay, the one that's on land. <clears throat> so, uh, where am I looking at? Okay, a couple things I added on. So where the acid rain was, I added precipitation, right? So it precipitates and acid rain. Okay, but let's let's keep going with the rain though. What if it it could rain right into the ocean? So obviously that would be just a direct dissolving of acid rain into the ocean, um, or it could this little corner here with grass. Um, you can have your um, rain land on there. And then from runoff, I mean, now you have like acid rain that was precipitation, it's on land. Well, now you're gonna have acidic runoff going into the ocean. So here I have it dissolved in runoff. And that's just because it was in the clouds, maybe it rained on the land and now it's going to the ocean. The other thing that I added on here, so um, just knowing what you know about volcanoes or the video that you saw right in the beginning of this, there is a lot of particulates that come out, um, a lot of ash and a lot of sediment, um, larger fragments. Have a good night. Thank you. Ha uh, larger fragments are actually called volcanic bombs, but that's neither here nor there. Those also are going to have that hydrochloric acid, sulfur dioxide, mercury, carbon dioxide, and you're going to have the hydrogen sulfide. It's just going to be in a solid form. Just because it's, you know, in a gas up here doesn't mean it's going to always, you know, have to stay in its gas form, um, especially coming out of the volcano. So those will kind of solidify in air because of the temperature difference. And then the, um, that ash can actually just go right in and dissolve right in the ocean. Um, inside the ash, and that's where I said volcanic ash dissolves into the ocean. Um, inside of there, there are, um, there's sediment or oh, minerals rather, minerals, uh, magnesium, chloride, and sulfur. Magnesium, chloride, and sulfur. We went over that on the topic support guide. And then again, if you get any ash on land, precipitation can take it, it can get leached in precipitation, or it can get dissolved in rainwater, dissolved in precipitation, and then runoff will carry it to the ocean. <clears throat> Smooth myself. Underwater, it's happening right in there. So it, 
not going to need all these different mechanisms or precipitation or runoff. The underwater is pretty simple. Um, the only thing I added on here, though, is, again, the ash that's coming out, the particulates, and in any kind of, like, minerals that come out. So there's your volcanic ash. It dissolves directly into the ocean, just dissolves directly. And again, same things are coming out, magnesium, sulfur, um, and then chloride ions. Same things we wrote over here with the one that's on land. So let's fill that in your chart, and then I'm going to keep going so you can pause me. On the inside, so the pictures are done. On the inside, just to list the gases, again, they're coming out from the same place, um, or they're originating from the same place. They're just coming out at different locations. Hydrochloric acid, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, um, the hydrogen sulfide, H2S, that's your energy source for chemosynthesis, and then mercury. The minerals that come out, uh, we would want to just like kind of broadly say it's volcanic ash, though it's, it's very mineral based, but volcanic ash, uh, magnesium, sulfur, and chloride, and those will increase salinity. Um, you may notice I put S with a subscript here, and here you had a superscript. It is, I believe it's a superscript. It doesn't matter. Okay, and then so those haven't changed, but now how does it get into the ocean? So I'm looking on the land side on the left side. How does the volcanic gas and minerals get into the ocean from um, land volcanoes? So this is, this is going to take a few steps. So first it erupts, and then it's going to dissolve into your water vapor. And then you're going to have precipitation of acid rain into the ocean. <laughs> Or you can have runoff, um, you can have it precipitate on land, and then runoff of water will go into the ocean. Additionally, um, the minerals, if they land on land, they settle on the land, then precipitation can leach them off the land and, again, carry it to the ocean and runoff. Now, you don't have the same question on the submerged volcano. It's not going to say, how do they get into the water? The answer is right here. It dissolves directly directly dissolves. What's up? Save the mouse? I don't want to save the mouse. Yes. There it is. Directly dissolves. Um, so yeah, we don't have all these different processes for the one under the ocean. Instead, I said, where can you find these subduction zones? So the denser plate subducts under the less dense plate or divergent boundaries where you're going to have splitting. And that creates new seafloor. Finally, same answer down here. Um, how does the chemical makeup or the chemical composition of the oceans change because of volcanoes? So the volcanoes are adding in these extremely acidic gases. Um, the ash is also very acidic. And so we want to consider what's happening to salinity and what is happening to pH. We're adding in all these minerals and ash, so all these dissolved particles, salinity is going to increase. Same over here. It does not matter that it's happening under the water. It's just, uh, you know, it's happen it just gets to the ocean faster. It's still going to get there, though. Um, ash will increase salinity, and so will the minerals. And then for the pH, um, it's very acidic. Everything coming out of your volcanoes are very acidic. So whether it's the ash or it's the gas um, or the actual large fragments, the, the pyroclastic bombs, that's what they're called. Anyway, that will decrease the pH, or you can say it can make it very acidic. Acids have a low pH. Oh. Right, last part. So on the back, you have the actual test question. Um, so explain, it's your big command word, how. So like, how does this happen? So we're going to say dissolving or directly dissolving. Explain how volcanic activity, and you have two different situations, volcanoes on land, volcanoes underneath the ocean. How do they affect your chemical makeup? So pH and salinity, how does it affect the chemical makeup of the ocean or of seawater. 
Um, initially saying like what these gases are. These gases are hydrochloric acid, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, mercury and carbon dioxide. Um, the gases will get dissolved in water vapor or atmospheric water. Precipitation is going to have that acid rain get added into the ocean. If the precipitation goes on land, runoff can bring those dissolved gases in and they're dissolved still in the water vapor, but it's acidic. These gases will decrease the pH or you can say it'll increase the acidity, just make it more acidic. The ash could also decrease the pH. So, so far I've only talked about the pH changing um, and then how, how that pH actually has an ability to get into the ocean and influence it. And that was solely for the one that's on land. Um, right below that, minerals or ash or chloride, sulfide or magnesium um, ions, those can increase your salinity, including the ash. It'll increase the salinity, the dissolved solids. Um, minerals can get dissolved in the water directly or the minerals can enter the ocean through runoff. So same kind of going back to that question to explain how. So the how is it's going to get dissolved directly in water or it is going to land on like the land and runoff will dissolve it and bring it into the ocean. Lastly, um, just a very simple statement. Volcanoes that are underwater dissolve directly into the ocean. Your submerged volcanoes will dissolve gases and minerals directly into the ocean. Um, I've seen this question be six marks before, and it's just it's a pretty decently common question. Um, but I think after the multitude of times you're going to be writing these gases down and what the minerals are, whether it's on this question um, or the list on the previous pages or in the pictures or writing it in your topic support guide, um, you will have written it a handful of times. So that should be helpful for you. And that's it for the volcano effect on the chemical composition of the ocean.